testosterone enanthate versus testosterone cypionate mm-hmm. and just trying to determine if cypionate's even an effective ester. I'm going to say it's not going to be that effective of an ester. Uh, Kurt, you said you were working on several studies. Can you mm-hmm. divulge sure. a little bit uh, about the details? The because one, it's very exciting. The first one, um, there is no defined pharmacokinetics of testosterone cypionate or mm-hmm. any of those esters that contain an aromatic ring. So I was going to do, or we're working on testosterone enanthate versus testosterone cypionate mm-hmm. and just trying to determine if cypionate's even an effective ester. Um, right. I'm going to say it's not going to be that effective of an ester after all this time. I don't think it's, I, I don't think it's broken down quite as effectively as a straight chain fatty acid. So that's something we're working on. So that should be published hopefully soon. Mm -hmm. Uh, Next week, week, I can fill you guys, or next month, hopefully we'll have more on that. And so, so, so how can you, can you discuss a little bit or disclose a little bit about the study setup? Like we're using human subjects or rats or humans. Okay. Yeah. Good. And just TRT doses, nothing crazy. I just, Mm -hmm. we're just, we're looking at serum, uh, testosterone, free testosterone, and just the other, the other standard metrics, Uh, nothing crazy. I just want to see what it does to the blood markers versus straight chain fatty acid. And then the next part of it, then I would go back and kind of redo what the original Minto study did in the 60s with Nandrolone and mm-hmm. show that MPP, uh, phenyl, the phenylpropanate ester is neither short nor effective as an ester for Nandrolone. And that's why the FDA had pulled it off the shelf after a year, right? And they switched right. to decanoate. They started with all sorts of esters, right? That Laureate, they tried a ton of things and decanoate was where they settled because it mm-hmm. seemed to be the most effective. And that's, I think, what is kind of misunderstood, right? You see that with boldenone too, right? There's a reason why it has that ester attached to it because that was the effective ester when Siba designed it, right? So there's all different versions, right? There's a Cypionate, you know, boldenone Sip now. I, mm-hmm. Again, I don't think that would outdo the standard, you know, version of Equipoise. But we Seems can, the you know what I mean? F- I can take this other places. Yeah, it seems that the most effective esters are just the ones that have a straight line a little bit squickly and they can, yeah. you know, the, the esterases can kind of cleave off the carbon chains one by one instead of having this this cyclical structure, which is the case for uh, cypionate and nandrolone phenylpropionate and uh, hexahydrobenzocarbonate, the yeah, uh, parabolin, yeah. right, those three. Because when you look at the into the half-lives, like what we discussed off air, it's all over the place. Right? Some say the half-life is five to six days. Some places say the half-life is 10 to 12 days. And it's it's very confusing. Um, and, and like you mentioned off-air, there seems to be a cap on how fast these esters can be metabolized. And thus, serum levels will never be above a certain amount. Yeah. So even if you inject like six grams of uh, cypionate, like uh, Chase Iron style, your serum levels would never be as high. Correct. Because that's what we're your body seeing, can- so that's Yeah. So that's kind of, that was my original inspiration for this. And, and also to redo, just because you see so much MPP being used now. And again, it, with the metabolism of it, you're seeing, it doesn't seem to stack. That's one of the reasons why it has to be used frequently. It's not used frequently because it's a short ester. It doesn't build on the, on the original dose versus a straight chain fatty acid when you inject an anthate uh, or decanoate, right? Each dose will subsequently build higher and higher, like steps going up or nandrolone phenylpropanate doesn't seem to do that. It just seems to have these little peaks and then it, it holds at this really at a level that's basically not effective. And that's not, that, Mm -hmm. that would be the same theory as tapering off steroids, right? Like it's, I think it's a wise idea when you start a cycle to taper up the doses to minimize side effects, but the old fashioned way of stepping down doesn't make a whole lot of sense because you're still causing suppression, but you're at an ineffective dose, right? So that, yeah. And and, and without escalating the dose upwards, you would still need to result to other esters if you want to go with bodybuilding dosages, because if there's a cap on how much, of these esters you can metabolize at any given time, then okay, for TRT, maybe you're fine. And maybe that's like the rate limiting factor similar you would put on a motorbike. So you can't drive you know, faster than 25 miles an hour in, in a certain uh, countries. Um, it's like, this is the maximum speed you can have with the motorbike and same with Zipionate. This is the maximum serum level you're going to have with the Zipionate. Yep. And that's it, right? So it's suitable for so- TRT. You can have 900 nanograms per deciliter, no more. But then for bodybuilders, that will be unwise because we do want, you know, 5,000, 10,000 yep. nanograms per deciliter. And Chase did right? not use Cypionate. I don't remember no, what no, ester. He used, he used the, an interesting ester. He used isocuproate, but isn't That's that right. a cyclical one yep. as well? 
Is that you? Uh, that's what mm -hmm. we're on about here. That's phosphodiesterase 7B, which cleaves off the esters. Mm -hmm. And that's how they that's how they look in 3D space because everyone just sees these flat molecules and never really pays attention to how the ester contorts itself in 3D space. So you can mm -hmm. see like cypionate and phenylpropionate, how the ring position even changes. That phenyl group is pointing down mm -hmm. in like a, a, a beta position or cis position. And then cypionate, the ring is coming out towards you. And what we're sort of looking at is how efficiently can they get inside that binding pocket to cleave that away. Mm. So your straight chains like propionate, enante, and even decanoe could probably slot in there very easily because yep. I don't have this in like 3D motion, but these are rotating around in space. So they can actually change their shape slightly where half of it could be pointing down and this half could be pointing up to allow it to go into that binding pocket. So mm -hmm. we never really pay attention to, you know, 3D space like that. So it's definitely something to consider when we're talking about like the, the esters and the half-life of the ester. It's down to that PD7B. And, it, you know, there's probably a level of genetics of how well you express that that enzyme, the total amount of that, the enzyme, the shape of the enzyme could vary person to person where a small little single polynucleotide, you know, polymorphism could change that slight binding pocket structure that cypionate might not fit it for you properly versus an antate might be a yeah. better choice. And that's why you see with a lot of individuals, they swear by certain esters. Like for me, I figured this out a long time ago that antate, masterone antate, testosterone antate, primo antate, that all works beautifully for me. I have the most stable serum levels. All metabolizes fast, no post-injection pain, so that's what I stick with. Uh, but daily subcutaneous microadministrations, and this gives me the best results. And then I switch to propionate, recipionate, or decanoate, or undecinate, uh, right, the EQ, and I get a little bit, you know, less favorable response. So I figured this out a long time ago. That's why I made the videos that I made about esterases and, and metabolism and esters and... Um, you know, choosing uh, based on the half-life. Um, and it, it, it seems to be helpful information, but again, everybody's different regarding their metabolism. And if you can figure out with a, a decent sample size why cypionate is just a poor choice, then of course Pfizer is not going to be very happy with you no. because they have the patent. Then again, the general public isn't very happy with Pfizer either because some of their products yep. give, you know, elevate your cardiac markers like it did for mine. So I guess we're equal, even then. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know them anything. <laughs> yeah, hey, nobody owes them fucking anything. 